Let's talk about the true meaning of worship. Today in Communion with Coffee. Hey folks, Apostle Lewis here with you, and I have got a full and busy schedule today. Uh, God is just doing so many wonderful things and opening up so many doors and so many places to uh, for Kathy and I. So I want to thank you for your prayers of that and support. Remember, you can find me over there on uh, thegatechurch.locals.com. I'm going to start be doing some uh, Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. I'll be doing some live videos on there. Now, it does have a whole live chat thing, so I'll be able to see your chat and all that. So it's going to be really good. I'm going to kind of enjoy it because we'll be able to follow along with you, answer your questions and stuff like that every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, as long as I'm in town and able to do that. Um, and then always lewisdcn.com. You can give in any place. You can also give uh, the Gate Church, uh, thegatejacks.com if you want to sow a seed to the church, uh, which is uh, the feed we're on today. Uh, you know, I am... Um, I just see great things for the gate, what the Lord is showing me, and um, so I'm pretty excited about it, um, uh, what I'm seeing in the Spirit, what the Lord has been telling me, um, and me stepping into something that I've been being prepared for for a long time. So, uh, you know, that that's something that we can talk about another day, how to, you know, how God has you do some things, you think you're stepping into it, and then he has you step into it. You know, and it goes to a whole different level and then to a whole different level. And you keep going to this uh, different levels of stepping into stuff. Because so, faithfulness matters. We'll talk about that in time. Let's talk about worship. You know, um, worship is warfare. Uh, halal praise. It is warfare. It, it is uh, a warring thing. And praise. Actually, praise. And we got to describe worship versus praise. Um, worship is a tool. Uh, or praise. When I say worship, I mean praise, because there's eight words for praise, and so forgive me for that. But you know, oftentimes um, it doesn't say we we necessarily bind principalities and powers. But let's go to Psalm 149, which is such a great verse on praise, um, and I want you to want you to read this along with me. Um, it says, sing to the Lord a new song. Oh, I'm sorry, praise. We should start right at the beginning, right? Praise ye the Lord. I mean, that, that that's where we're going to see what this one's about, right? Right from the beginning. I'm going to pull it up. I want to give you every word that deals with um, praise in here so that you would have, that see the different under, different words for praise, okay? So this word praise the Lord is hallelujah. Basically, it is the word hallelujah. And and um, the word halal, ya, hallelujah, actually means to give God praise or give the Lord praise. It's Hebrew, three Hebrew words. And this word halal actually means to give God a bright and shining celebration with ranting and raving, bragging and boasting, boasting to be clamorously foolish, stultified, appearing to be of an unsound mind. Um and so he says, sing to, sing to the Lord a new song. All right. And he says, and his praise in the assembly of the saints. Those people who um, don't think um, <laughs> like it's important to uh, praise people or be in church because, you know, um, you know, well, we don't have to be in church. No, there's an assembly of the saints. Yes, there's a spiritual, but he's not talking about that. Okay. All right. He says, let Israel rejoice in their maker. That word rejoice, it means to brighten up. It, 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 you know, you know um, some people, listen to me. Some people never get the benefits of praise. They never get the benefits of the word of God because they refuse to change their countenance. Because they refuse to smile and to be happy. You have to command your soul. To, you know, look at David when he said, soul, why are you downcast? He goes, why are you downcast? Oh, my soul. You know, and 
what happens to a lot of people is they think that I, I, you don't understand my situation. No, no. Um, we do understand uh, your situation. Um, so um, you, what you don't understand is that we're trying to help you out of your situation. And David says this, Psalm 42, 5. Why are you down? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for he for the help of his countenance. And, and what happens to a lot of people is they think God's supposed to do it, but they will not do what they're supposed to do. And that is to hope in God. Know that God is your hope, your salvation. Uh, he is. If you don't do that, folks, look at there's ways to access God. There's ways that, you know, we come in. There's ways that we request things from God. Being having a pity party doesn't do it. I know that sounds harsh, and I wanted to have pity parties. <laughs> you know, there is times I've been in some battles. I've been ridiculed, shot, robbed, and I want to have a pity party. What I had to fight for was my hope in Christ. I had, I had to literally fight for it at times in the sense of fight my own soul to say, no, we're not going down this road. When I got shot, I, re, I refused to allow that to be my defining moment of like, this is it, it's all over. You know, the enemy came against me like a, like a flood, but God raised up a standard against them. But I sat there and, and it was my job to hope in God. God didn't make me hope in him. I told myself, no. I had the officer ask me, you're not, you know, why are you not angry? And I said, oh, no, you can't be angry. I said, that's how the enemy gets you. I've already forgiven him, and I'm rejoiced in God that he saved my life. And they couldn't understand that. And yet, when I did that, bam, the, the whole EMT truck got filled with the presence of God. All right. So it's really important that we do that. All right. It's you have to train yourself. David did this. David strengthened himself in the Lord. Then he praised God. Then, I mean, then he put on the ephod and seeked God in prayer. Really stunning. All right. Um, let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. <clears throat> let them praise his name with a dance. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Uh, with the dance. I'm not going to go into the word for dance, but that word praise is the word halal again. Give God a bright and shining celebration with ranting, raving, clamorously foolish, stultified, appearing to be of an unsound mind while praising your God. It is, um, um, it, you know, when I, when I see that, I get a picture of Whitney Houston's song, I Want to Dance with Somebody. And she, you know, how joyful that whole, if you want to watch that old YouTube video, that's, that's, come on. Come on, you know, that's all I can do. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's a joyful praise. You know, some people want to get in there and they want it. They think dancing is, you know, they're doing all this warfare. No, no, you're not doing warfare. You're praising God, but it wars with it. God uses it. All right. And we're going to see that. And then uh, he says, let them sing praises uh, to him with the timbrel and the harp. Now this word uh it, it, it get, this this is through instrument this this zamar is the word zawar zawar i don't know if i'm going to say it zamar z a it's pronounced z a w m a r zamar and it it is denotes through the idea of striking with the fingers so you have the timbrel you have the harp and so play them on the instruments. So this is an instrument kind of praise. So, you know, there, there's, you know, those of you that have the ability to play bass, violin, guitar, harp, whatever it might be, stringed instruments, this word would be for you to, you know, you can just sit there and you can play your instrument in worship. You know, you can do that with God. I, I wish I had that talent. I don't. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and he, he will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Oh, that's a nice word, right? Let's be joyful in the glory. And that one, that one means to jump for joy. Ah, all right. Let them sing aloud. That word sing aloud, um, uh, uh, you know, it means to shout, okay, uh, on their beds. Boy, you know, 
Hallelujah! You know, on your bed. Let the high praises of God, okay, let the high praises of God, exaltation praise, exaltation praise, to rise, okay, rise. And there's not a word there for praise now, because that's the, the, the exaltation or, or high praises is one word, Raman, and it, and it means to rise, okay, to lift up, to exalt, okay, to mount up. So let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword be in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters of iron and their nobles with fet- uh, their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to so execute them the written judgments. This honor have all the saints. That word, and it says at the end, praise the Lord. That's a halal again. Look, praise is a weapon, okay? And what happens in praise, number one, what happens is, now listen to me. Psalm 100 says that we enter his gates with thanksgiving, yada, and we enter his courts with praise. All right, so let's go back to, let's go to that chapter. I got a couple minutes here. Um, I'm getting beeped on for something. I don't know what. Well, let's see what we got here. Let me pull it back there. Psalm 100. Psalm 100. I'm sorry, just taking me a little bit more time than I want to get back there. Let's go this way. I could have just typed it in, but I'm scrolling instead. Okay. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. To the Lord, all you lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. That way, that word there, Yehovah, for he is, for it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter the gates with thanksgiving. Toda. Toda is the word that means um, to give God the sacrifice of praise, confession, thanksgiving. Okay? And that root uh, is Yoda. And, and you know, you, you get into this word, Yoda, and you could you got to start breaking it down and see where it goes. It goes quite deep, but... Thanksgiving is kind of like, um, oh God, you're so, it's, it's, it, what happens in Thanksgiving when you just get thankful, it's kind of, you just, you kind of relax, Lord, thank you. And when you do and you give thanks, God is able to give you more. It's one of the laws of increase is giving thanks. All right. I, I'm not, I'm trying to stay with praise here. Okay. I really am. And you enter his courts with praise. Now this word praise is to heal all, which is halal set to music. Okay? To heal all is, is crazy praise, let's call it, you know, exuberant praise to music. You know, a lot of people want to do quiet, gentle praise. And there's a place for that. But I really believe in the mornings and worship like when we come into church, that we have to offer up exuberant praise. We shouldn't have to stir up people to do that. They should know to do that. And be thankful in him and bless his name. So now you see that we have this um, this uh, kind of schematics of how we're going to enter the kingdom. How are we going to do that? Well, I will enter the, the presence of God with singing. So I already know now, Psalm 104, is a, Psalm 100 is a great, schematics of entering the priesthood okay one i'm going to enter his gates with thanksgiving look you never want to get outside the gates so remain thankful so you're always in the gates let me say that again you never want to be outside his gates so remain thankful so you stay inside the gates okay and as you come into his gates and, 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 and you begin to sing to him and worship him 
And when we're in a corporate setting and you have Tehillah praise, you know, there's a posture for that. And I know not everyone can do this because some people have physical ailments, but the posture is standing up. It's hard to jump. It's hard to really shout. It's hard to really give them exuberant praise when you're sitting down. Okay? All right. Now, what that does is the enemy gets bound. That's why people get delivered. Well, you can have demon, people literally get delivered in a pure praise setting. Why? Because it begins to bind the principality, the, the, the demons. And, and, and it also, look at praise disrupts. Say that with me. Praise is a disruptor. Okay? Praise is a disruptor. And I saw a pattern in Jesus' ministry where he started doing miracles and then they started giving thanks and praise to God, which ticked off the Pharisees. You know, it's kind of a stunning process. There's a godly, righteous purpose of praise. Okay? And we need to know that what that purpose is. What that, what that is for us. What that is going to look like for us. And, and so we need to understand that and run with that and um, be able to um, um, go after that in a, in a manner. Uh, so it, it is something that we, we want to be able to do together when we come up and praise. And if you learn how to just to praise God, um, then that is going to be a great, great um, tool for you. Just stay in praise. I mean, literally stay in praise. Because um, if you do that, if you can stay in praise, if you can stay in that place, if you can stay in um, the place of, of praise, gladness, thanksgiving, you will have less warfare than if you get outside of it. And when someone gets bitter and someone um, doesn't stay in praise, you know, and, and what I'm discovering is that, um, that it is important for you and I to really sit here and to maintain uh, a place of worship, a place of praise, a place of um uh, thanksgiving. And every day I want you to practice getting up and being so thankful before the Lord that um, it really, really is um, something that totally changes your life. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, God bless you today. Uh, go ahead and have your coffee, your communion. Um, I think I went kind of longer than I normally do. Um, a little bit longer, but that's okay. I love you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Love to hear from you. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.